The NBA's preseason offers an early look at what every newly constructed team will look like out on the court during the season, and while teams are definitely not going all out in these games or playing their normal rotations all the way through, there are usually some glimpses of what could be to come that you shouldn't gloss over in these games. This obviously brings us to today's video, where we'll be going over six winners and losers of the preseason period, meaning the winners are the ones that stood out the most in a positive way, and the losers unfortunately hurt themselves in this time, and on both sides of the spectrum it could be a sign of what is to come as the regular season is about to begin. This obviously isn't the end-all be-all for these selections, and they very well could turn it around in either direction, but this is just what has been seen so far. Before we start though, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel, as all support is very much appreciated. Now with that being said, let's begin. We'll start with one of the unfortunate selections for the losers of the preseason period, and the first one up is Draymond Green of the Golden State Warriors. There was a lot of positive energy surrounding the Warriors going into the new year, as they are coming in as the defending champions, ready to commence their title defense. But during one fateful practice, Draymond ruined all of that by punching teammate Jordan Poole in the face. We've heard stories of things like this happening in the past, where teammates get into heated exchanges and wind up throwing hands, but then the video of the punch here leaked to social media and we actually got to see, with our very own eyes, what went down, which shifted the narrative completely. Draymond has been a vocal leader of the Warriors for years, and his importance cannot be understated, but his abrasiveness has definitely rubbed a lot of people the wrong way in that time, and his antics on the court previously have also also earned him a reputation as someone who tends to take things a bit too far. With his contract expiring soon, he was going to demand another max contract extension, but the Warriors only have so much money to spend, and he, Jordan Poole, and Andrew Wiggins were all looking for big money at the same time. The likelihood of Draymond getting that big money now that he's known as the guy who fights his teammates is incredibly unlikely, and along with that, there's another big reason and why he won't be getting it, which leads us to our first winner of today's video. Speaking of which, the first winner of today's video during this period is in fact Draymond's teammate Jordan Poole. Now, Poole isn't a winner because of the fact that he got punched in the face, that's not what I'm saying. Poole is a winner not only because he was balling out on the court looking sharp in the minutes that he played throughout the preseason, but also because the Warriors did, in fact, getting a contract extension agreed upon with him, paying him up to $140 million over the next four years. The conversations that were being had surrounding this topic throughout most of the offseason was that the team would let this situation play out throughout the next year before deciding who to give the big money to, and who to let walk, but when Draymond did what he did, it seemingly made their choice easy. Not only did the Warriors pay Poole the big money contract extension, but they also gave Andrew Wiggins a big extension, so their core moving forward now looks set in stone. They only realistically had enough capital to hand out two big contract extensions as well, and now that they've done that, Draymond, if he wants to stick around long term, is going to need to take a pay cut. Now going back to another loser of the preseason, the next one up is Russell Westbrook of the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers had one big question that they needed to answer before this season, and with the season about to begin tomorrow, that question is still not answered. The question? What do the Lakers do with Russell Westbrook? Figuring out how to work him into their plans is something that they struggled with all of last season to no avail, and this summer Westbrook found himself in trade rumors the entire time with no trade ever coming. The Lakers then reshaped over half of their roster in free agency and through trades, but Westbrook is still the piece of the puzzle that seemingly doesn't fit. It has now gotten to the point where the Lakers are starting to experiment with lineups where Russell Westbrook starts on the bench during games that they use during a couple preseason games, and honestly, that might be their best option even if Westbrook isn't satisfied in that role. Westbrook's body language and demeanor out on the court during their preseason games hasn't exactly been ideal, he clearly doesn't want to be sacrificing as much as he's being forced to, but at the moment, unfortunately, that's what the team needs from him. 
Now back to the winners column, the next preseason winner today is Tyrese Maxey of the Philadelphia 76ers. This week has been a period filled with contract extensions, including one that I mentioned earlier in this video, and with the amount of money that's being thrown around, Maxey is without question going to be receiving some big money in the near future. Tyler Hero got paid about $120 million for four years, Jordan Poole received about $123 million with potential incentives adding more to it for four years as well, and Tyrese Maxey very well could be the best of that bunch in this conversation. If the going rate for volume scoring young guards on the come up is nearly a max contract, then he definitely deserves the same if not more. Last season, Maxey had a breakout year where he averaged about 18 points per game while shooting the ball efficiently, making 49 9% of his total shots and 43% of his threes. This year, Maxi is also now in a full-time role where he can focus on scoring the ball instead of having to be a makeshift point guard with the presence of James Harden. And after the Harden trade last season, when Maxi was in this role more consistently, his scoring and efficiency numbers increased from what I just said they were for the season. In the first three preseason games this year, Maxi was scoring about 42 points per 36 minutes, drilling three and attacking defenses off the dribble, and while that number is obviously not sustainable for a full regular season, he is definitely looking like a player who is about to emerge even further. Next up in the loser column from the preseason, we have the Phoenix Suns. The Suns' season last year ended on about as sour of a note as it possibly could have, getting blown out on their home floor in Game 7 against the Mavericks, and their offseason didn't exactly go much better. When training camp started, DeAndre Ayton said he never even spoke to Coach Williams until the day that they reconvened for training camp. They started their preseason off with an embarrassing loss to the Adelaide 36ers from the NBL in Australia, and the L's didn't only happen on the court. Their owner, Robert Sarver, was responsible for a toxic work environment and is now being forced to sell the team, and important role player Jay Crowder is also holding out, waiting for the team to trade him, as he is clearly not pleased with the state of the team moving forward. And finally, the last selection we'll be discussing today is actually a mix of being both a winner and a loser to a degree, and it's Ben Simmons of the Brooklyn Nets. This basically sums up Simmons' entire career to this point, depending on who you talk to, and now that he's back on the court, we're seeing a lot of the same. When I say this, I mean it as literally as possible. Ben Simmons right now looks like the exact same player that he was two years ago for the 76ers, which could be viewed as a positive because there were some worries about potential rustiness, but then for obvious reasons it can be viewed as a negative thing because, well, Simmons was an incredibly flawed player before the trade happened. Simmons still will not even consider shooting the ball from the perimeter, and occasionally he'll throw up a nice baby hook or a floater from five feet away, but for the most part, he doesn't look to score. What he still does very well, though, is he is still someone who hounds opposing ball handlers on defense, and his passing is still very sharp as well. The hope is that his skill set will be a better fit for Brooklyn than it was for Philadelphia, but for those of you who were hoping to see him potentially improve on his weaknesses, they will probably remain disappointed. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below who you think the biggest winners and losers of this preseason period were. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.